tip-off the second game here tonight. Uh, Gustavus and Dolphins winning the first game 79-66 over Hanover College in Indiana. Uh, to advance to the Elite Eight here in the men's uh, NCAA Division III uh, basketball tournament. And the winner of this game will take on Gustavus and Dolphins tomorrow night at 7 o'clock uh, here in Stevens Fieldhouse. We'll have that game for you here on Innovation Video. Yeah, a very big game tomorrow night for uh, the winner of this game, and Gustavus. Uh, plays for a chance to, uh, or plays to go to Virginia, uh, Salem, 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 and uh, Virginia. play in the Final Four. And, uh, you know, just a big game for both teams. BV, Occidental's never been here to the Sweet 16 before. Uh, BV, like we said, uh, was here three years ago, but uh, the only common opponent, you have uh, Occidental played Aurora last week, uh, beat them by 19, but uh, BV played Illinois College uh, the first round, uh, who beat Aurora in the title game of their conference title game, and, uh, you know, beat Illinois College by 30, but uh, expecting a big game right here. Got to look for BB to go down low right away and uh, you know try to uh, you know try to do dominate this game early down low. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, uh, you got to look for uh, both Chris Peterson and Robbie Byer. It's uh, they're both seniors and you know that they they do not want this to be their last home game. Uh, a win would give them uh, another game tomorrow night and that would probably that would be their last home game their senior year and uh, don't want to leave this place with a loss. All right, and uh, you know we're getting ready for the starting lineups here, and uh, I think we're, uh, I think we're getting ready to uh, you know toss it down to the house uh, for the starting lineups. We've got 30 seconds left uh, uh, left here, but uh, you know before the starting lineups are ready to go. So, uh, any predictions for uh, tonight's game, Matt? Uh, just uh, just uh, you should look for uh, Eric, both Eric Weavers and uh, Chris Peterson. Those are probably the go-to guys. Uh, BB has been doing a great job of uh, pounding the ball down low and I uh, expect them to give the ball to Chris Peterson uh, most of the game. That's where they have to go to. And uh, you can just tell that BB has a size advantage. Look at both, both teams. Uh, BB uh, needs to get the ball inside to their post players. And uh, hopefully for them that will work out. All right, we're getting ready to uh, go down to the house here uh, for the starting lineups for tonight's game, Univista versus Occidental. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Buena University for tonight's NCAA Division III Men's si Sweet 16 basketball matchup with our visitors tonight, the Buena University Beavers and the home team, the Occidental College Tigers from Los Angeles, California. And now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. For the Beavers, at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Urbandale, Iowa, number 32, Michael Cameron. For the Tigers, a 6'4 senior from Seattle, Washington, number 5, Ben Rebisu. At forward, for the Beavers, a 6'7 junior from Audubon, Iowa, number 34, Scott Weber. For the Tigers, a 6'7 sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona, number 21, Dolan Wilson. At center for the Beavers, a 6'5 senior from Audubon, Iowa, number one, Chris Peterson. For the Tigers, a 6'4 senior from Coopville, Washington, number 30, Gavin Keohane. At one guard for the Beavers, a six-foot sophomore from Denison, Iowa, number five, Eric Weavers. For the Tigers, a 5'7 senior from Los Angeles, California, number 11, Song Kuhn. And at guard for the Beavers, a six-foot junior from Cumberland, Iowa, number 33, Casey Pelzer. For the Tigers, a six-foot senior from Seattle, Washington, number 22, Chase Young. The Beavers are coached by Brian Van Hafton, the Tigers by Brian Newhall. The NCAA promotes good sportsmanship among student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by... Okay, and uh, yeah, we heard the starting lineups right there. Uh... You know, the BB fans already getting, in, getting into it and, uh, you know, trying to get into these Occidental players' heads. But, uh, you know, we'll see uh, uh, Occidental's gym only seats about half of uh, half of what Stevens Fieldhouse does. So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have to see uh, how well they're able to, uh, you know, withstand the crowd, uh, crowd noise here tonight. And, uh, yeah, and the, the crowd's going to be going, be going for BB all game. Uh, BB probably not used to playing, a, playing with a crowd this big. Stevens Fieldhouse hasn't been packed like this. Uh, in about three years since the last time they played in uh, Sweet 16. So, I mean, motions will be running high for both teams, that's for sure. You see, uh, you know, both teams getting ready for the tip-off here. It'll be number 21, Wilson, for... Uh, uh, for Occidental tipping against number five, Chris Peterson from Buena Vista. Get ready to get underway. 
Uh, tip is up, and it's collected by uh, number 11, Kuhn, for uh, Occidental. He'll be working against Eric Weaver here right away. Uh, just, uh, just right into the game, 1950 uh, left to go here in the first half. Uh, Wilson up at the top of the key, guarded by Peterson. Uh, he's going over to uh, number five, Rubasu. Taking a shot over Pelzer, a little bit long with that. Uh, but you got number 30, and he's going to walk with that right there. Pretty great yeah. walk right there. Yeah, great defense by BB. Uh, gave up, gave up the, the offensive rebound there, but uh, but uh, just a great trap there, and uh, didn't give him a chance to uh, get the get the shot up and uh, force the travel. You see Scott Weber up there uh, right away on the uh, top of the key. Eric Weaver's wide open at the top of the key for a three-pointer. He drills that. Big shot right away for Eric not leave Eric Weaver's that wide open. If Occidental does that all game, he'll have a field day. Eric Weaver's one of the best shooters you'll ever see. You got Kuhn getting it over to Young. Back up top to Wilson, and they're going to get it to Rabasu. Uh, he's going to put it up and in. A nice little runner right there for Rabasu. See Casey Pelzer bring the ball for BB. See a replay right here. Eric Weaver's you know, wide open at the top of the key. You see a shot right there by BB. Chris Peterson uh, coming down with the rebound, and uh, is going to time up, and uh, the ball's going to stay with BB. BB with an early 3-2 lead, exactly 19 minutes uh, you know, left to go here in the first half. So far, you see Oxenhill doing a very good job of uh, crashing the boards and getting some, uh, get some rebounds, getting the, get inside. Usually it's all Chris Peterson, but uh, Peterson seems to be the only one down low for BB. See Eric Weaver's on top of it, over on the left. Over to Pelzer on the top of the key. Up to uh, Scott Weber on the right elbow. Over on the left wing to Pelzer. He's going down low to Weber. Double teamed right down there. Back over to Pelzer on the left wing. Over on the right wing to Weber. Uh, he's uh, pump fakes and uh, you know gets a guy up in the air, but uh, he's going to get that. And uh, you know there's going to be another jump ball this time. It's going to go to Occidental. So yeah, right away uh, some tough play on the defensive end by Occidental. Yeah, there you see the tough hustle there on the offensive rebound, though, by uh, Chris Peterson. He gets hands there and get a jump ball. Uh, BB will get the next possession next time there's a jump ball. See Rabasu up on top of it. Over to uh, number 30, back over to Rabasu. He's working against uh, Casey Pelzer. Rabasu, uh, turnaround jumper, doesn't come up with it, and uh, Casey Pelzer come up with the rebound. Very up. good job by Pelzer. Up to uh, Eric Weaver to a three-pointer. Nice. He doesn't come up with it. And uh, uh, Chris Peterson and Rubasu uh, tying up again. And uh, this time it's going to stay with BB, a third jump ball, uh, jump ball of the game. So uh, you see both teams getting after it right away. Yeah, great defense there on the other end by uh, Casey Pelzer. And a great job of getting that offensive rebound. And then uh, they gave the ball inside to Peterson, but uh, gets tied up. See the uh, you know, quick hands right there by Chase Young of uh, Occidental. Not going to knock the ball out, but it's going to stay with uh, BB. You know, 34 seconds, only a second off the shot clock right there. So, uh, Occidental showing a lot of quickness so far in this game. Uh, doing a see great Eric job. Weaver's right there. Nice little pump fake. Takes a jumper short with that. You know, tries to get his own rebound, doesn't get it. And uh, up top to uh, uh, Kehoe, number 30, right there. Yeah, number, number 22 right there. And uh, oh, he's going to carry the ball, I believe. So, uh, turnover right there for Occidental. Going to give the ball to BB. 3 to 2 lead for Buena Vista. 17.55 here to go uh, in the first half. Yeah, at first, uh, crowd thought that might have been a foul on Pelzer, but Pelzer was nowhere, nowhere near the ball. Uh, great foul, or great call by the ref there. You know, look, looking down low to Peterson again, working against uh, Dalin Wilson. Nice, nice little pass. pass inside of the middle lane to Mike Cameron. Uh, puts it up, doesn't get it to go. Uh, Chris Peterson with a nice kick right there to uh, get the offensive rebound and get this credit. Anyway, five to two, the with a three-point yeah. lead. Great rebound by Chris Peterson. He's been doing that all year. Those offensive put back, putbacks have given him a lot of points this year. Just great hustle. See Young with the ball over on the right wing. Up top to Wilson. Uh, working inside against uh, Chris Peterson. Doesn't get it to go. And you got Mike Cameron crashing the boards right there coming out of the rebound. Yeah, you see that, that, oh. see that pass by Indus. See a uh, shot up by BB. No good. Uh, you got Scott Weber fighting for the rebound. Doesn't get the tip. And... Uh, Occidental can come up with loose ball on that. You can already tell the crowd is a huge factor in this ball game. Uh, very loud thus far in the game. See Kehoe right there. Nice uh, try for a nice little pass. And uh, I think they're going to get uh, Peterson on the kick right there. Reset the shot clock and uh, keep the ball in Occidental. Yeah, Peterson zone. tried to argue. It hit off his leg, but I kind of stuck it out there and hit, hit the bottom of his uh, bottom of his foot. Yeah, Rabasu inbounding the ball. Uh, over to Wilson over on the le right wing. Back up top to Kuhn. Rubasu down low to Wilson, working against Peterson again. Nice double team help right there. Kuhn for a three-pointer right there, and he hits that. So ties the game, 5-5, five 16-35 five, here to go yeah. in the first half. You see uh, 
Chris Peterson with the ball up on the top of the key. Nice job of Oxnell by finding the open man. Nice pass right there by Eric Lee. Just down low to Mike Cameron. He uh, doesn't get it to go the first time. He gets, uh, gets his own rebound and uh, he gets that to go. Yeah, great job by Cameron down low. Uh, that hustle and get his own offensive rebound and put back gives BB the lead. See Kuhn right there. Nice uh, nice uh, defensive play right there by Mike Cameron. Gets it out on top of them, but uh, now Kuhn coming up with it. Gets, kicks it back, way back out and uh, over in the right corner for Eric Weavers for a three-pointer. Good shot. Good shot by Eric Weavers. Makes it a 10-5 ball game here. Four minutes going by in the first half. BB with a 10-5 lead right away. Occidental not doing a very good job of recognizing Eric Weavers. And wide open there for the three-pointer. Yeah, two times he's been left wide open for a three-pointer. And uh, hit it both times. He's got Kehoe working against uh, Scott Weber right there. Uh, they're going down low to Wilson working against Peterson. Back out on top to Young. In the middle of the lane to Kehoe. And, uh, you know, just a nice little eight-footer right there. Scott Weber makes the score 10-7. Uh, BB with a three-point lead. Down low to Scott Weber working against Dallin Wilson. And uh, they're going to get the foul right there on Wilson with the body. So, uh, you know, Scott Weber uh, is going to go to the line to shoot. Nope, they're going to take it out underneath. Uh, so far this game, uh, things happening just as you would expect them. BB, uh, Eric Weaver's getting some open three-pointers, and uh, also BB getting the ball inside to Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson with some nice offensive rebounds. Mike Cameron also playing a very good game thus far. See uh, Randy Beeson and uh, uh, Brandon Keyes checking in for uh, BB. And uh, coming in for Occidental, you've got uh, number two, who is uh, Dan Murphy. And also, nice little inbound pass right there to Scott Weber. Gonna kick it back out on top. Brandon Keyes up top. Nice Going ball down low to Peterson. Nice ball movement right there. Keys with a 15-footer right there, and he hits that. Nice little jump shot by Brandon Keys to make the score 12-7, uh, to 7, Vita Vista. Uh, almost five minutes gone by here in the first half. Yeah, great ball movement by BV. Not holding the ball very long. Finding, just passing it around until they find the open man. Worked great, that possession. Got Murphy right there with a three-point basket. Wow. Nice shot right there by Dan Murphy. Box in and cuts the lead to 12-10. to 10. Uh, Vita Vista has a two-point lead. So every time Vita Vista's gotten that lead up to uh, five points, uh, you know, Occidental's had an answer. Brandon Keys driving in right there, back out on top to Peterson. Gets it off to Weavers for a three-pointer again. Doesn't hit that. Nice, uh, nice fight right there by Randy Beeson nice to get the rebound. rebound. And uh, BB's going to set up, set up the offense back out on top again. 14:35 here to go in the first half. Eric Weavers working against Coon uh, from Occidental. Uh, going down low to Peterson. Back over the corner to Eric Weavers for another three-pointer. Doesn't make that one. Nice uh, offensive rebound by Chris Peterson. They're going to kick it back out on top again. Yeah, three. this is the BB's third chance at a basket here. Going down low to Peterson. Wow. Nice uh, nice up and in uh, right in the middle. But a uh, nice, uh, nice fight rebound. right there by Scott Weber. And he gets it up and in. Wow. Huge three-point play by Scott Weber. Outstanding play by Cra Scott Weber. And BB just crashing the boards. Four chances at a basket that time. Hard to stop a team once down the court, let alone four times. I mean, just unbelievable rebounding there by BB. That's going to be Wilson's second foul, so two early fouls by uh, Dolan Wilson of uh, Occidental, just uh, six seconds, excuse me, six minutes into the game as uh, Peterson takes a seat. you got Robbie Byer checking in for him. Scott Weber at the line for his free throw attempt to uh, try to complete the three-point play. Uh, free throws up good, makes it a 15 to 10 Buena Vista lead. 4-14 here, to, uh, excuse me, 14-14 here to go. Yeah, scary, uh, thing, for, scary thing for Occidental. Uh, Eric Weaver is getting a lot of open shots, missing some of them, but uh, you keep giving him those open shots all game, he's going to make uh, more than more than a miss. Yeah, Kuhn right there working against Weaver. Pulls up for an 18-footer. Uh, doesn't get that to go, and you got Scott Weber coming up for a uh, big rebound, and Brandon Keyes bringing the ball for the University of Beavers. Over on the right wing, looking down low to Robbie Byer. Gets it down low. Byer's having a hard time getting holding on to it. Gets it back out to Keyes. Back down low again to Byer, but uh, nice. you know, Randy Beeson in the right spot at the right time, but... Uh, Coon Frox ended up coming up with it and uh, pushing the ball up the floor. Yeah, that last pass a little, little hot for uh, Byer to handle. Nice job by Beeson, but uh, couldn't convert there on the, on the layup. Good idea by uh, Brandon Keyes trying to get the ball down low to Robbie Byer, but uh, you know, just a little hard on the pass, and uh, BB couldn't really hang on to it. You got number two, Dan Murphy, working against Randy Beeson. Doesn't get the shot to fall. Gets a rebound, and uh, it's going to be a foul on the play right there against either uh, Randy Beeson or Robbie Byer. And that foul is going to be against uh, Randy Beeson right there. That's his uh, first foul. Score is 15 to 10, 13, 18 here to go uh, in the first half. Have Jordan Campbell checking in for BV.
see uh, uh, number two with it, Dan Murphy out on the left wing. Working against Randy Beeson. Looks like he might have walked there. Uh, Keon, with, uh, Keon right there with a uh, you know, nice, little, nice little turnaround jumper. Yeah, BV went on a little run. Uh, Occidental there cuts, cuts the lead back to 3, 15, 12. BV with uh, 12, 57 left to go in the first half. See Eric Weaver's working on the right wing right there. Up top of the key to Brandon Keyes. Uh, working against Rabasu. Back over to Eric Weaver's going down low to Brandon Keyes. Working against Rabasu. Brandon Keyes with a nice little turn around from eight feet right there. And uh, you know, pushes that lead back out 17 to 12. 1240 here to go in the first half. And uh, you know, Occidental's coach is going to call a 30 second timeout. Yeah, very very good play there by uh, Brandon Keyes inside. He might be see, one of the most. See it right here working against uh, you know, Finn Rabasu, who's a four time all conference player yeah. from Occidental. So uh, Keyes might be one of the most athletic people on uh, BB's basketball team. Very uh, very wiry and uh, he's a, you know, he's very six, athletic. He's 6'7, you know, 6'8, seven, six, eight, and uh, he always checks in. He always plays usually a two spot for uh, for BB at the uh, shooting guard spot. So causes and, a lot of matchup problems for uh, the other team. And anytime you can throw a six seven guy, uh, you know, in the backcourt. Uh, you know, it's able to dribble the ball and uh, you know get some penetration, some passing. Uh, it's going to present problems for you. Yeah, so far BB playing very well this game. Uh, five point lead, 17-12 with uh, 12:40 left to go in the first half. It's been uh, it's been up and down. BB's gotten some uh, you know, matches. BB's biggest lead of the game, five points. But uh, you know, every time BB's gotten the lead back up, uh, back to five, uh, Oxenham's always hit a you know a key two or three point basket and. Uh, you know, cut that lead back down to a one possession game. Yeah, definitely. Eric Weavers with a couple of big three pointers. Uh, missed a couple open shots, but uh, BV doing a great job of crashing the boards and getting some second chance opportunities. Yeah, each time Eric Weavers has been, uh, you know, left wide open, uh, one time at the top of the key and uh, one time in the right corner. Uh, he's hit two big three point shots. Uh, with the ball right now, you got Rabasu for. Uh, Occidental takes the uh, you know short little 12 foot jumper and hits that. So 17 to 14, 12 20 here to go in the first half, and uh, you got Robbie Byer at the top of the key for uh, BV. I uh, give it up to Brandon Keys on the left wing. Uh, Randy Beeson uh, working right there. Got Jordan Campbell over on the left wing. Back up top to Robbie Byer. Randy Beeson looking down low to Byer. Gets it down to him on the right block. Turns around and uh, wow. uh, hits a nice uh, hits a nice little turnaround right there from the block. So. Uh, Robbie Byer, the senior, coming up with a big two-point basket yeah. to make the score 19-14 uh, to 14 with uh, under 12 minutes here to go. In the first great half. turnaround by Bo Robbie Byer. Really wouldn't expect him to, to make that shot, but uh, just a great, great move inside by Robbie Byer. See that replay right there? Uh, you know, Campbell gets the ball right down to Byer, and he just uh, turns around right on the block and hits that uh, you know, little five-footer right there. See uh, number two right there, Murphy. Uh, back over to uh, number 42 for uh, Occidental. That's uh, number... Yeah, just left him wide open on the on the wing there. Uh, number 42, Zach Phillips, come up with a big shot right there for uh, Occidental. As we see uh, Jordan Campbell at the top of the key with the ball for BV. Back over to Randy Beeson. And, uh, got Brandon Keys right there working against Dan Murphy from Occidental. Gives it up to Brandon Keys, going down low to Randy Beeson. Got Randy Beeson working down low again. Puts it up, shot in traffic, and he doesn't get that one to go. And uh, Dan Murphy for Occidental comes down with the rebound. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Keys is the one you want down on the post there. You'd rather, or no, Beeson, you'd rather have one of the post players like Byer or, uh, or a taller player down low, but uh, had a nice chance that I just missed the layup. Yeah, Rabasu with the ball right now on the right wing for uh, uh, Froxeno being guarded uh, heavily by Brandon Keys. Working a nice 15-foot uh, jumper right there at the uh, uh, free throw line. Doesn't get that to go, and Eric Weavers leading the break for the Beaver Vista Beavers. Down low to Robbie Byer, nice little turnaround right there, and uh, doesn't get that one to uh, you know fall on the uh, on the roll. But uh, scores 19 to 16, under 10 and a half minutes here to go in the first half. BV holding on to a three-point lead over the Occidental Tigers. See Kuhn on the right wing working against uh, Eric Weavers. Pretty quick little point guard over on the left wing to Murphy, looking to go down down low to Phillips. He uh, Murphy goes up with that and comes back down with it. Uh, yeah, the crowd wanted to travel crowd there. Crowd wanted to travel there and uh, probably a valid call, but uh, no, refs, uh, refs didn't see it that way. Got Kuhn working right there against uh, Eric Weavers. Eric Weavers right in his face. and uh, uh, Yeah, Eric Weavers might have had a piece of that. Uh, just great defense there by Eric, the sophomore. Eric Weavers leading the break right there, working against Kuhn. Out on the top of the key to Jordan Campbell, going right wow. down to Robbie Byer. Nice. Oh, doesn't get that. And they're going to get Robbie Byer on a foul right there. Yeah, just uh, can't miss shots like that inside. Just great pass. Where 
uh, Byer wide open and uh, missed that layup. Yeah, Robbie Byer wide open and a uh, uh, great pass. You know, just does not get that ball to go down. You know, use, you know just a nice little drop step right there and uh, just going to get it to go. Yeah, the matchup between uh, Eric Weavers and, and Son Kuhn has been very interesting. Uh, both very quick and very good with basketball. So Kuhn right there bringing the ball up against Pelzer. Over to number 33 for Occidental. That's uh, Jelani Kelly. He's over in the left corner right now with it, looking down low. Uh, Zach Phillips up, you know, around the free throw line, and uh, they're going to get a foul right there. Uh, Mike Cameron trying for the uh, rebound, and they're going to, you know, call a foul on Occidental right there. Yeah, I think uh, Cameron kind of got bailed out by that rebound there. Kind of a weak rebound there, but uh, got bailed out by the foul. Foul right there on uh, uh, Chase Young. That's his first. Occidental's third. BB with two. 9-19 here to go in the first half. BB with a 19-16 lead as Casey Pelzer brings the ball up for BB. You got Chris Peterson checking back in the game. Nice, nice pass right there to Brandon Cruz down low. Puts it up and in for two. Makes the score 21 to 16. 9.05 here to go in the first half. Being just a five point lead. Keys is going to be a very good basketball player. Can, he can go inside effectively and shoot outside. Tough, tough matchup problems. See Chase Young with a three pointer right there and he hits that. So I see that move right there by Brandon Keys on the replay. But 21 to 19 again. Uh, eight under nine minutes here to go in the. Uh, well, the first half, and Occidental hitting a big three to uh, cut into that big, you know, BB. Once they get that lead back out to five, Occidental finding a way to cut into it. Now Cameron on the top of the key, going down low against Peterson, working against Keyhone. Yeah, Peterson uh, a little far out there. Back up to Cameron over in the right corner. Casey Pelzer for a three-pointer. Doesn't nice hit that. Rebound. Nice rebound by Chris Peterson. Puts it up in the left hand. Makes the score 23 to 19, 820 here to go. In the first half, BB with a four-point lead. Chris Peterson just an animal inside, getting those offensive rebounds. Uh, tough, tough to stop a team when you uh, miss right there by like Casey Pelzer and a nice position by Peterson on that uh, very athletic rebound. rebound. And they're going to get uh, Chris Peterson right there on the uh, foul, just right as it was stolen by Mike Cameron. You had, uh, you know, uh, you had Kehoe uh, trying to work inside, and uh, you know Peterson called for a uh, you know, kind of a kind of a questionable charge call right there. Yeah, Peterson pretty stationary there. I'm not sure. Uh, not sure if that was the greatest call in the world, but uh, Occidental will get another chance to uh, cut into this four-point lead by BV. 23-19 with 8.08 left to go in the ballgame, or the first half. Up top to uh, Chase Young. Over in the corner to Rabasu working, you know, trying to get downloaded to Dallin Wilson. Up and over Peterson, and he gets that shot to go. So 23-21, to 21, still a two-point BV lead. Uh, under eight minutes to go, about 7.50 here to go in the first half. And uh, BV trying to uh, trying to get, extend that lead. Occidental's that answering everything they give at him. Down low to Peterson, gets it back up to Pelzer, working against Wilson. Off balance right there for Peterson, so he kicks it back outside. Mike Cameron right there with a 13-foot jumper. Nice shot, by Mike Cameron. Nice shot by Mike Cameron. Makes the score 25-21. 7:30 here to go in the first half. Univista with a four-point lead. So far, it's been the fours for BV. Uh, Cameron, Keys, and. Uh, and uh, Beeson playing very well this far in the game. Yeah, you have the, you know, the three sophomores uh, they're stepping up their game. Their first uh, you know, Sweet 16 tournament looked like Murphy might have walked there. Gets the ball over to Keon, and they're going to get, I believe, uh, Mike Cameron on the foul on the floor right there. So. Yeah, it looked like he got the wrist, the wrist of the Occidental player in that drive. You know, Scott Weber checked back in for Jordan Campbell. So All right, right now out on the floor for BV, you got Keys, Weber, uh, Peterson, Pelzer, and Mike Cameron. So, out on the left wing, you got Wilson working against Peterson, trying to drive in on him. 14-foot jumper doesn't get that to go, and you got Scott Weber in a nice position right there to Casey Pelzer, uh, looking to lead the break for Bina Vista. Uh, Keys on the right wing, back up to Pelzer, over to Scott Weber at the top of the key. Mike Cameron with another 14-foot jumper off the glass doesn't get that one to go. And uh, you've got Occidental coach uh, going to take a 30-second 30, uh, 30 timeout. 6.53 here to go in the game. BB holding on to a 25-21 to 21 lead. That's yeah, very interesting. Eric Weaver has been out of the ball game the last four or five minutes. I'm not sure if they're trying to rest him until later. Or I'm not sure what's, what's the deal, but uh, hasn't been in the ball game and uh, was definitely a factor the first couple minutes. Yeah, BB holding on to a four-point lead. Every time they've been able to get that lead up to four or five points, uh, you know, Occidental's either hit a two or a three to get, cut it down to two, uh, you know, Cut that lead back down to uh, you know a single basket, but uh, you know Coach Van Hampton's probably uh, you know trying to get his team to go on a little bit of a run, get it down low to uh, you know Peterson and Weber, and uh, you know try to get them some action down low. So far, they've been having some success with it. 
Yeah, BV, BV going to the lineup with a lot of size. Uh, those uh, those four which we talked about, and Peterson, uh, gives them a height advantage at a lot of different positions. So Young bringing the ball up against Pelzer. Over the right wing to Murphy. Back up to Wilson working against Peterson. Hands off to Rabasu, their star player right there. Uh, puts up a nice little jumper, but he doesn't get that to go. And uh, foul on BB and Rabasu is going to go to the line shooting two. Foul's going to be on Scott Weber. That's his first. Uh, fifth team foul on BB. Occidental only with three team fouls, but 640 here to go in the first half, 25-21. As Rabasu gets uh, ready to shoot his first free throw. Free throws up and short, so no good for uh, Finner Basu. Uh, Basu on the year, an 81% free throw shooter, so you know, big miss right there for him, uh, trying to get that lead back down to two points. Weaver's checks in the ball game. You don't expect to see him see him out of the ball game much much of the rest of the way. Basu getting ready for his second foul shot. That shot is up and no good again. And Weber coming down with a big rebound. Yeah, two two pretty ugly free throws from an 80% 80, 80 free throw shooter. Yeah, kind of. Got to wonder if Nurse had anything to do with that. Going down low to Peterson right away is uh, Weaver's back on top. Nice Weaver's pass. Nice, uh, nice pass down low to Brandon Keyes, and uh, he's going to get fouled by Rabasu. So uh, foul right there on uh, Finn Rabasu, and they're going to take it in uh, in from underneath the basket. That's uh, going to be Rabasu's first foul. Oxenos fourth team foul. 6.28 here to go in the first half. 25-21 the BB lead. Casey Pelzer in inbounding it. Gets it way out to Mike Cameron, who's guarded by Rabasu. Over in the right wing, Casey Pelzer. Looking down low to Scott Weber. It's uh, being double teamed. Gets it back out to Pelzer. Driving towards the middle of the lane. Caught up in traffic right there. Turns around and tries to hit it. And uh, got Wilson falling down with the uh, loose ball rebound right there. And Occidental looks to push the ball up the floor. Tough shot by uh, Pelzer in traffic. Spin move, kind of off balance. Not really sh not really a high percentage shot on the offensive end. Pelzer usually doesn't make those kind of... Uh, kind of shots. Go down low to Wilson right there working against Peterson. Back out on top to Kuhn. In the middle of the floor to Kehon working against Scott Weber and he hits that over Scott Weber. So you now 25-23 BB with a two point lead. 5.45 here to go uh, in the first half and BB uh, you know looking to looking to build on that lead again. Out on the right wing to Mike Cameron. Uh, looking for Eric Weaver's cutting across. Going down low to Peterson right away. Pels are up at the top of the key for a three pointer. Uh, misses that. And uh, Kuhn for uh, Oxenel is going to chase down the rebound, looking to tie it or, or uh, take the lead right here. Yeah, Pels is going to have to make some of those open shots. He's going to get some open sh open looks because uh, Oxenel keying on Eric Weaver is on the, on the outside there. Pels are going to get some open looks. Got Kehoe over uh, Scott Weber right there, and uh, nice rebound by Eric Weaver. He's looking to uh, push the ball up the floor. Over to Casey Pels on the left wing, down low to Scott Weber right away, uh, working against Gavin Kehoe. Nice little turnaround, uh, turnaround jump hook right there by Scott Weber, but short with that. And uh, Dalhan Wilson coming down with a rebound for Occidental. BB looked like they've lost some flow on the offensive end. Uh, having tough job, tough time and uh, getting some getting some shots out, but not the best shots, not the highest percentage shots you'd like. Rabasu working against Casey Pelzer. Back up top for Wilson with a uh, you know a three-point basket. And they're going to take a uh, three-point basket. It gives Occidental a one-point lead, 26 to 25, 435 here to go in the first half. Uh, Eric Weaver's working against Song Kuhn for Occidental. And, uh, you know, nice little play right there by Chase Young. He's going to get an easy layup on the steal right there for Occidental. So, you know, three-point lead right now for Occidental. Kind of uh, taking the Beaver crowd out of it. BB needs something positive on the offensive end. The crowd trying to get get them to come to life. Uh, haven't done much on the offensive end the last, time down, last couple times on the court. A foul on Occidental right there. And uh, wait to see who that goes against. Going to be on Rebisu. That's his second foul, 15 foul for Occidental. As we see, uh, Phillips checking in for uh, Dolan Wilson. So, you know, two of the two of the all-conference performers uh, for Occidental with two fouls on them already. So they got to you know, be aware of their foul trouble right there. Pels are in, in the ball to Cameron, and uh, he's going to go for the shot and he's going to get fouled. So Mike Cameron going to line for two shots. Uh, with a chance to cut into this three-point Occidental lead. Yeah, nice job by BV. Uh, they, they noticed they've lost some of their, their offensive flow, and they uh, tried to get back to the basics and get the ball inside to uh, to Cameron off that out-of-bounds play. 28-25, 4.09 here to go in the first half. Uh, Mike Cameron getting ready for his first foul shot. Shot is up and no good. So in and out for Mike Cameron is uh, 
see Robbie Byer checking in and taking out Chris Peterson. So BB is facing a you know, three-point deficit right now. So we uh, have a substitution for Occidental. Rabasu is going uh, to come out of the game. Wilson going to come back right back in. 28-25. Cameron getting ready for his second foul shot. 4.09 here to go. Need a point here. In the need, first half. Need something positive on this end. Cameron with his second foul shot. Shot is up and good. So 28-26. A uh, little over four minutes here to go in the first half. Occidental with the ball and a two-point lead. Crowd get by BV. Big defensive series here. Trying to get the ball back in with a chance to tie. See Phillips out on top of it. Back over in the left wing. Coon. You got Wilson working against Robbie Byer down low. Gets him uh, up and spinning, and uh, Wilson gets that shot to fall. So 30 to 26, Occidental with a four-point lead. So uh, this is a know, great move inside. You know, last four minutes of the game, Occidental, uh, you know, kind of taking over. Nice jump shot right there by Eric Weavers, and he just can't get that one to go. And uh, Casey Pell's going to come up with it. Eric Weavers gets his man up in the air. Nice pass. Nice pass off, and uh, you know, Robbie Byer just can't come up with it. Mike Cameron outside for a three-pointer. Doesn't get that. Nice rebound by Scott Weber. Weber up with it and in. So Occidental had gone on a 9-1 to run right there, but Scott Weber with a two-point basket cut this Occidental lead uh, back to two, 30-28 to with 3.15 here to go. Yeah, BB shooting, shooting pretty poorly of late. Uh, the only thing bailing them out is the, the, te the fact that they're attacking the offensive boards and getting a lot of second-chance opportunities. Kuhn over to Wilson with it, working against Robbie Byer. Back out on top to Kuhn for a three-pointer. Wow. And he drills that. Nice three-point shot by Song Kuhn. So, uh, seven, uh, excuse me, a five-point lead, 33-28 for Occidental. 2.50 here to go in the first half. Got Casey Pels up at the top of the key with the ball for BB. Scott Weber down low with it. Working against Gavin Kehoe. Nice move. Nice move by Scott Weber and up and in. Nice move against the uh, first-team all-conference performer, Kehoe. Yeah. Not many people uh, used to play like Scott Weber, uh, a forward uh, with uh, excellent inside moves. You saw the pump fake there worked great, went under, under his defender and got an easy layup. See Kuhn with it over on the left wing, giving it up to Wilson again. Uh, they're going to have him work against Byers. We see this, uh, this nice move right here by uh, uh, Scott Weber, but uh, Occidental uh, coming up with another, uh, another big basket. Makes the score 35 to 30 uh, with two minutes here to go in the game. Mike Cameron driven, driving in. Tries to get the ball to Robbie Byron. It's uh, knocked away by Kehoe, and uh, you know, Kuhn comes up with it. BB really needs to, uh, you know, really needs to uh, look, get, you know, nice tight passes inside when they, uh, they try to go down low. Yeah, down five. They uh, they need to stop here, and they need to get this. Uh, this they can't let Oxnell extend this lead going into the half. See Wilson out from deep from three point wow. range and hits that Occidental. You know, just hitting some uh, big three pointers makes the lead 38 to 30. Minute and a half here to go in the game, and uh, you know, BV really needs to uh, really needs to pick this up here to uh, try to cut in this lead going down to halftime. Go down low to Byer right away. Yeah, they can't rush. Need to need to work it for a good shot. Eric Weavers with a three pointer right there. Nice Mike rebound. Cameron come up with a big, nice offensive rebound. Puts it back in. 38 to 32. Occidental with a six point lead. Uh, just over a minute here to go in the first half as uh, C. Kuhn bring the ball up uh, up the floor for Occidental. Yeah, Matt, I think that's the third or fourth time be, uh, Eric Weaver's missed a three-pointer, but yet there's been a, be a Beaver there to bail him out with a, with a rebound and a layup. Yeah, they're leaving. Uh, Weaver's is missing some uh, open three-pointers. He's got Kuhn working against him right now. Over in the corner to uh, going down low to uh, Kehoe, and they're going to call Mike Cameron on the uh, – on a tough defensive play right there, kind of questionable, but uh, yeah, not a good foul by Cameron. Uh, very tough shot, a fade away, turn around with a hand in your face. Uh, Cameron kind of got got on him with the body, but uh, not the foul, not a foul you wanted there. Kehoe a 70 70 percent free throw shooter as he gets ready for his first shot. First shot is up and no good. So you know, Occidental not hitting their free throws when they need uh, need to. And we see uh, Chris Peterson checking back in for Robbie Byer and uh, Jelani Kelly checking back in for Occidental. See uh, Wilson take a seat. He's got two fouls on him, so uh, he'll be out for the rest of the half probably and uh, I try to uh, try to save foul trouble right there. See Occidental making that one, makes the score 39-32. to 32. 50 seconds here to go in the first half as you see Casey Pelzer bring the ball up and uh, BB trying, uh, trying to get that lead at least down to five points uh, for, uh, for the end of the half. And, uh, you know, Eric Weavers is just a yeah. little bit too much uh, mustard on that pass yeah, right there. Worst thing that could have happened right there. You need a you need to score and you need to work the ball around for a, 
for some kind of points going into the half, and uh, now they gave Oxenol another chance to extend that lead to eight, maybe even nine or ten. Song Kuhn with a three-pointer along with that one, and Casey Pelzer coming up with uh, a big rebound right there for BB. And, uh, Smart play like, by Pelzer, slowing it up. Looks like BB's going to work for the last shot of the half, trying to cut this uh, seven-point lead down to either four or five uh, before the uh, before the halftime buzzer goes off. Now that's Emmanuel with the ball right there, Eric Weaver. Got Eric Weaver's working against Song Kuhn right there. Uh, dribbles, tough shot right there by Eric Weaver. What do you say? He hits it with, uh, uh, with two seconds left to go on the shot clock and uh, cuts Oxen shot. on the lead, 39-34 here going into the halftime break. Yeah, Eric Weaver just missed some open shots right there. He was not open there. Great, great moves on the offensive end. Just nailed that last second shot. See this replay here by Eric Weaver's spins, kind of gets hung up. Takes just an off-balance uh, jumper from 19 feet. Yeah. And he hits that for, uh, and it makes the score 39-34 heading into the halftime break. As we see Occidental fans, they've had a lot of cheer, cheer about here in the first half. Uh, team came back and uh, BB had a 25-21 lead. And uh, Occidental's gone on an 18-9 run to uh, you know, take that lead, uh, take that lead 39-34 uh, going into halftime. But uh, Yeah, Benavista is uh, hoping that that shot by Weavers might get some momentum going into the half. They cut that lead to five. And, and uh, luckily, because uh, if Oxenal was scored on that other end, it could have been a nine-point game, or and that a nine, nine or ten-point lead at halftime is hard, hard to come back from. But they got the lead manageable to uh, five points, and uh, just a great shot by Eric Weavers. You saw uh, Song Kuhn was was almost amazed that he made that shot. Just uh, Kuhn was all over him that that play defensively. Yeah, well, I mean, what can you say about Eric Weavers? The last uh, first-round game against Illinois College here, he hits uh, you know, hits a three-pointer with two guys in his face in the first half, and then the you know, the Iowa Conference Championship game, he hits that, uh, you know, shot just very similar to that man in his face and uh, he hits that jumper to end the half and uh, it will end the game in that one and uh, win the Iowa Conference uh, tournament for BV and lock up that NCAA berth. But uh, uh, BV, you know, they didn't shoot real well in the first half, had a lot of turnovers, and uh, they just got to keep pounding it down low and uh, try to get Peterson. Peterson had a good first half, but, uh, you know, after the first five or six minutes of the game, he really didn't touch the ball yeah. that much. They, Mimi did not do a good job of getting the ball to Chris Peterson down low. I think most of the points he had were off of offensive rebounds. They they need to work the off work the ball around and uh, work the offense inside to him because uh, he is pretty much the key to this offense. And you saw when uh, he was out of the game, they it was tough for them to score and points were hard to come by. And uh, they had a they had a drought there for five or so minutes and uh, couldn't come out couldn't come up with any points. As we see the winner of this game. Uh, we'll advance to tomorrow night's game in the Elite Eight uh, to play Gustavus Adolphus, who was a 79-68 uh, you know, winner in the first game. A uh, big win for the Gusties from uh, Gustavus Adolphus. And, uh, you know, BB looking to come back from this five-point deficit and, uh, you know, try to get into that uh, try to get in that Elite Eight. And only one Iowa Conference team has ever been in the Elite Eight. And, uh, you know, BB's trying to uh, join Warp the 1987 Warburg team who made it. So uh, BB's going to BB has some work to do. And, uh yeah, it's only a five-point game. It's, it's, it's very manageable, but uh, they need to play a lot better and take, take a lot more care of the basketball on the offensive end. Uh, I think that would be the key. They've been playing tough defense, but uh, just need to take care of the ball and not make those uh, tough passes. Yeah, BB in their second-round game against Rockford, they were down 12 at one point in the first half, I believe. Uh, came back and cut that, uh, you know, that Rockford lead at halftime to six or seven points. And... Uh, that's what we're looking at right here. We got Occidental with a 39 to 34 lead. Uh, you know, just five minutes, uh, five minutes into it, and uh, you know, you know, excuse me, uh, five point lead. Uh, you know, one half into it, and uh, you know, BB had you know a su successful first 10 to 15 minutes of that game, but uh, after that, it was all Occidental pre pretty much. Yeah, BB went right out of the gates. Uh, Eric Weavers with a couple shots, but uh, he's gotten some open shots. Hasn't been able to make them uh, last last half of the first half. But uh, yeah, we're gonna throw it down to Tom Stewart on the floor for an interview. So uh, Tom, what do you have for us? And then she's got the guys that behind the scene yeah. ta talking to her. Hi, uh, we're standing here with President Fred Moore. We're just gonna ask him a few questions. Uh, President Moore, uh, how proud of uh, an event is it for, for BVU to host an event like this in the NCAA tournament? Well, Tom, is terrific, obviously, for the university. It's a very festive atmosphere. We've got four great basketball teams here. A lot of crowd spirit on the part of all four schools, and uh, we look forward to a big victory for the Beavers tonight. Yeah, it sure would be nice, and I think we're going to do it in the second half. We just need to come around and get some better shooting in there. President Moore, um, how 
can you uh, describe the sense of pride that this university feels being able to host an event like this and, and being able to have a team that participates in an event like this? Well, it's terrific to have the event here, but I'm glad you gave me a chance to talk about the team. Coach Van Haffen and his staff and the student athletes have just done a remarkable job this year. They win, they win with class, uh, they're gentlemen off the court, and we couldn't be prouder of them as we are of our women's team. I know you're going to be talking to Coach Perry in just a few minutes. That's right. We're going to talk about them. They also had a remarkable season. Well, President Moore, thank you very much. Uh, just another example of talking about BBU, a class act on the court and off the court. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. We're going to now bring on Janet Berry, the women's head coach. We're going to ask her a few questions about the women's season as well. Uh, Ms. Berry, please come on over. Okay, uh, now, Coach, you had, a, you had a really good season. We're very proud of you. Uh, what the girls accomplished this year. Why don't you give us a, just a little bit of a recap of okay. what you accomplished. Well, we finished 19 and eight on the season and uh, we're really proud of that. And then we also just ended up one game out of the conference from the conference title. And, uh, you know, sitting here tonight watching this, this is where we want to be next year. We feel we can get, you know, we were here in the Sweet 16 in 97. We want to get back here. Amy Magers on our team uh, was voted MVP of the conference, will return next year. We also found out this week she's made the All-American first cut, so she's in the top 40 in the country and we'll find out in another week if she makes the top 10 and I really think she has a good shot to make that. Uh, Katie McGuire also made second team All-Conference, my first freshman to ever do that. It's a great accomplishment in this league and so, um, you know, but overall, we just had a really great team. We had a lot of players. Jess Jensen, our senior, just gave us great leadership all year. And uh, Kelly Taylor and Audrey Montag uh, filled in in the starting line top, lineup along with Megan Holtorf. And they all just did a great job. And I, I think we really just had success because we were a team. Although Amy Magers put up some great numbers, it was really, we just really functioned well as a unit. Right, it was a wonderful season. We just had a bit of a hard luck, uh, you know, a real heartbreaker in the conference tournament at the end there. Coach, and as a coach, can you speak about how, what you've seen in the game so far? How are we doing and what do you think we need to work on a little bit? Well, we've missed some, I'm sure Coach Van Hampton is thinking, you know, they missed a few bunnies down underneath that we normally make. Um, you know, I'm sure they want to get Eric Weaver a few more shots. I didn't think he got a, I thought he, you know, um, needed to get a few more touches. I mean, Van Hampton knows what he's doing, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I'm i sure he thinks that too. And obviously they gave him the ball at the end of the half. Hey, it's a great game, and at this level, everybody's going to be pretty decent. And they ended up talking to uh, VH during the week. He knows that. And, um, but you know what? Those first five minutes, this is their patented time where VV comes out and makes a run. And um, I've seen them, you know, I watch them a lot during the season. We travel with the men. and. They're going to go on a run here at the beginning of the second half, just like they always do. I've seen them down four or five points before, and they'll come out here and score the first ten points. But great crowd tonight, and it's just a really fun atmosphere, and uh, just makes you really proud to be associated with Buena Vista. That's absolutely right. Coach, congratulations on an absolutely wonderful season. With all the power that you got coming back, we hope to see you here next yeah, year. Yeah, I, I hope so. This is a lot of fun. and. Uh, I, I hope our women, I hope that's what they're thinking in the stands right now. They want to be part of this next year, and um, we're going to work really hard and try to do that. Okay, thank you very much, thank Coach. You. All right, guys, we've got a great game going on right now. Hopefully, BB is going to come back, show this best crowd in the land that they are the best team in the land. Back to you, guys. All right, thanks, Tom, for uh, you know some innovative uh, 